One, two, sound, check. Camera, check. Lights, check. All the parts, machine base, check. Let's go. <laughs> Hi and welcome to my basement. This is my little woodworking shop where I've been doing woodworking for the past seven or eight years. I mostly work with hand tools, power tools, handheld and stationary power tools on furniture parts and various odds and ends. This is my place where I go to decompress after work to do hands-on work instead of the everyday office stuff that I do most of the time. I'm a production engineer by trade, dealing with CNC machines, robots and the capabilities in production and production organization is my daily business. But I've always wondered why exactly would I need a CNC for a hobby? That changed around 2017 where I started to wonder whether having a CNC in the basement wouldn't be a really nice addition to what I already have. So I started to think about what kind of work envelope would I need, what requirements would I have, what do I want to machine, what kind of tools do I want to use. It quickly became apparent that a mostly printed CNC wouldn't be the right thing for me. I thought, okay, if I'm going to do this, then proper profile rails, ball screws, preferably aluminum instead of steel, otherwise a mechanical engineer inside of me probably would just die. So I started to do a bit of CAD design. I looked at certain parts, did some sketches, but it quickly became apparent that getting the mechanical parts, the machine parts, would be the greatest challenge since my metalworking abilities were zero. And so uh, I was thinking, well, what to do now? So I started to look at the market. I looked at what is available out there. I looked in, in Germany, in Europe, I looked in the US, and I quickly realized the stuff that I'd really like is, or was at the time, a bit outside of my budget. And I realized, okay, if I'm going to buy something pre-designed by someone else, wouldn't I start modifying it immediately anyways? So I had to reevaluate and I started to reconsider and I came to a conclusion to put the CNC idea as far away from me as possible, as far away from my purse as possible. I suppose it's human that these ideas don't easily leave you. And so it stuck with me. I kept looking at boards and one day in a German RC forum, I came across a user named Andreas who introduced his own design and he offered to sell small series production parts, including a bit of instructions to assemble it. I was rather fond of that idea and I just did it. I bought the parts, I built the machine, I got it running, I started modifying it and slowly but surely CNC router itself became a hobby on its own. And some of those adventures and misadventures are found on this channel. In actual fact, everything was going great. The machine, Fenya, was working quite well and there was no real reason to change anything about it other than the desire of trying something else, trying something new. At that point, I knew that the CNC bug had gotten me quite badly. However, Early summer 2020, there was a phone call with Andreas who introduced me to a new design office. And he asked me, don't you want to build one? And I said, yeah, sure, of course I want to build one because I already have one and I have so much space, I really do need another one. I brushed it off basically. However, these ideas get stuck with you. So I called him two weeks later and we agreed on let's do this. So I sold my CNC router, I cleaned it up. I put it on the German equivalent of Craigslist. I sold it quite quickly. And I even built a new controller for it. Since then, I've been doing preparations. I've cleaned up this basement, even put new paint on the walls, did some preparations that can be found here on this channel. Fast forward, it's now early 2021, and I'm finally at the point where I can say, okay, the mechanical construction assembly is complete, and I'm ready to talk about it and to talk about his new design. However, before I do this, I need a bit of a disclaimer. I'm not entirely sure how YouTube handles advertisement. And while this is not an advertised video, I'd like to give you background. This channel is called Ministry of Broken Anvils and Andreas is distributing his designs through a website called fräserbruch.de. Fräserbruch loosely translates to broken anvils. And while there are similarities in name, there is simply no business or any other affiliation between me and him. I'm doing this video because I wanted to, because I want to talk about the design and the way he puts machines into the community, which I rather like, and I'm happy to support whenever I can. All right, enough with the talking. 
it has been enough. The tablecloths are running out, the little rabbit is getting a bit impatient, so without further ado, uh, let's go. I'm happy to introduce Condor. Condor is a new design by Fräserbruch.de and combines best practices of previous designs with a slightly different drive concept for its longest axis, in this case the table axis or the Y axis. For Condor, a tandem axis configuration was chosen. This is to say that under both of these covers there is a ball screw, which is driven synchronously so that it can allow for a wider portal beam. The portal on this machine is 850 mm, which in a router design based for aluminum extrusions and aluminum plate is probably at the outmost limit of what you can do if you have a central drive, meaning a drive for this axis somewhere in the middle. Because then, especially in the situation the machine is in right now, with the spindle to, the, to a side of the machine, there is a high risk of it binding. There are further advantages to a design like that. Most importantly, it is that you can rest the machines on its longitudinal beams instead of just its end plates on both ends of Y. This helps with sagging and there are further advantages. In this case, both Y spindles are driven by individual servo motors, so there is no need for a belt drive that somehow obstructs your working envelope, meaning you can place workpieces that extend extends the table in both directions. However, you need synchronization, but this can be done in software, especially with Linux CNC. The machine uses 20 mm guide rails on all axes with two rails per axis and two trucks per rail. It is designed so that the lengths are within reason adjustable, with the exception of Z, that's a fixed length, which makes the overall design rather scalable to whatever your particular requirements are. The design uses ball screws for driving all the S-axis, those are 60 mm, with different levels of pitch with 5 mm for Z and 10 mm pitch for X and Y. The end processing of the ball screws follows a typical standard processing that you can find with various vendors. However, the machine doesn't use a typical BKFK bearings, but rather a custom designed bearing, which is a little more compact and in the end even cheaper. The axes of the machines are driven differently. The Y-axis is directly driven with two servo motors that are mounted towards the back on individual holders. The remaining two axes, X and Z, are driven indirectly using belt drives. These are usually done with 9mm belt drives. However, I opted to go with 50mm ones simply because I wanted to try taper lock mountings. The 50mm ones are nice, however they are total overkill and at the moment they mostly function as hand wheels, however that they do quite well. The machine will be powered using servo drives, however not the typically known JMC IHSV 180W servos that are quite common, but rather with 400W AC servos. Those are not having integrated drivers, but rather the drivers in the control cabinet. These motors will be used for Z and X, and the one I'm holding currently is a Z motor, easily recognizable by the two additional wires that are used for the brake. For the wire axis, I will try slightly different servos. Those are from Delta Automation from Taiwan. They are of the ASD A2 series, and I'm hoping to be able to try, uh, use and leverage their tandem axis synchronization features. This is optional, this works perfectly fine with IHSS stepper, closed loop steppers, but I wanted to give it a shot and I will give an insight here on this channel on how to wire this synchronization and how to properly integrate this into Linux CNC. Not quite sure how yet, but we'll see. In the first part of the video I stated that I tried to look at two different ways to get to a CNC mill. One, buy a whole kit and two, go for the DIY approach. The Fräserbruch.de approach is effectively the best of both. You could also say it is super wise DIY. Andreas takes care of the design, we're seeing the design up here, and of course our documentation and all the other stuff. Furthermore, Andreas takes care of facilitating the procurement of the parts, he provides a bill of materials, 
vendor recommendations and various other bits and pieces of smaller parts such as bearings and screws. All you have to do is buy the major components and there you can choose from a variety of individual options. This allows to buy the stuff that you really want or maybe even to take into account material that you already have. This mostly relates to the linear motion system, so the kite rails and the ball screws, as well as the aluminum extrusion. This allows to adjust for what you have, but also to adjust for budget. For instance, with linear motion, you can opt to buy cheap Chinese rails, or you try to look for an upgrade, for instance, from Highwind or even more premium suppliers. If that sounds a bit daunting to you, don't worry. There is a good community with an online forum, as well as a Discord server community that will help you out in choosing the right components at any time. The adjustability is not just limited to choosing the right vendor. This is also about being able to directly swap certain parts. In my case, I choose to change the longitudinal profiles on which the machine rests. I replace the 8080 by 120 by 80 millimeter profile simply because I want to have options for fuse use and changing them becomes expensive after the fact. Another area where this applies are the drag chains. In my case, and you've probably seen in the earlier clips, I've opted to go with rather large ones and the reason is fairly simple. I will use an ATC spindle again and last time I did quite a few upgrades prompting me to replace the ones that I initially used. That's a lot of effort and also takes quite a bit of money, which I'd like to avoid. The assembly of the machine is quite straightforward and simple. However, when you take your time and you deploy a bit of care, things become a lot easier in the long term, especially when it's about alignment. The initial steps are always the same. Start filling the profiles with sand to dampen noise, then start to assemble the linear rails on the individual components, align them, then start to assemble the components into the access modules and also align those along the way. I was fortunate enough to have a reference straight edge for alignment purposes available, but the longitudinal members themselves are usually reasonably straight to serve the same purpose. The assembly of the portal beam, the x-axis, is especially simple because it is not just the aluminum extrusion, but it's also doubled up with an additional 10 millimeters of aluminum, which has been milled flat and square. When you assemble the machine, it's good practice to not immediately include the ball screws or just test fit them and remove them afterwards because aligning the machine is a lot easier if you don't have to deal with the ball screws all the time. This is something that's generally recommended and mostly possible thanks to the design. Also, make sure to assemble the actual machine on the base the machine will rest on later on. With that, you're mostly done with the mechanical assembly and all that remains is alignment, which takes some more time, but it's relatively easy to do. However, let's be honest, since this is the assembly of a prototype, there were some issues to deal with, mostly regarding grease ports and, of course, the length of various screws. However, these issues have been resolved with the release candidate 2, so if you choose to build a Condor, your information will be up to date. As you can see, my condo isn't quite finished yet. However, since it's a part of a family of prototypes, there are some other machines that are already finished and I've been given a bit of video to show off, so please enjoy. This concludes the mechanics. The next step for me is the assembly of all the electronic components. That is going to be quite a lot of work and there will be another video on this channel. If you don't want to miss this and want to make sure that you get notified, please consider subscribing to the channel or giving the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Until then, thank you very much for watching and see you next time on the Ministry of Broken Animals.